welcome Gary we, to the RRL Sports Show. You are very first guest on the Sports Show. So we, we're very happy to have you. How are you doing? Yeah, good Zaya. Thanks for having me. And it's great. It's a great honor to be the first guest. <laughs> yeah, we thought we'd get a World Cup winner on the show first up. We, we'll start with, we can only go downhill from there. So uh, <laughs> what have you been up to? What have you been doing? Uh, we caught up last week in Kailitsa. We saw you and Makaya. You were, you were busy with a few things. Can you... Tell us what you've been up to these days. Try to try try to keep myself out of mischief as a 54 year old, um, <laughs> but, but um, I'm still still very privileged to be involved in cricket. And um, you know, the cup. Uh, yeah, we've got our we've got the, the the foundation which has been going for about seven years now. We've also got our cricket business, which uh, we base out of Ronnewash High School, which is fantastic. And then we've. Um, we, we launched an, an online coach education business about a year ago. So um, it, it's, keeping, it's keeping me out of mischief, that's for sure. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, um, the, we, the work we saw you doing last week, though, uh, with Makaya at the, the Betway Skills Hub workshop, it looked quite innovative. It looked like um, there were young coaches there just willing to take in. Uh, can you tell us about uh, what exactly they were doing there? Yeah, it was fantastic. You know, we've uh, we've been involved in in that part of Kailicha now for the for the last seven years. Uh, our intention with the foundation was to build some quality infrastructure and essentially to create a cricket centre of excellence in a township area. You know, um, we get a lot of kids that are fortunate um, to get scholarships into the elite cricket schools in the country, um, and they get pulled out of their communities and they go do it. And some are successful, some aren't. Um, but there are many that don't get that opportunity. And um, it's great now to have a, um, a top-end cricket facility at Krasani School where, you know, a lot of the kids in the area can just walk to the indoor nets and go and have a, have a net session. So um, that's, that's the one component. The other component is we want to build the coaching base there because coaching, um, as you know, as I hear, is, is, is vital to the success of any cricket ecosystem. Um, you know, I, be, I, I was very fortunate through my career to have many great coaches that help me and guide me along the way. And I think it would be great to create that uh, um, in that township area as well. So we've got eight coaches that we pay a salary to through the foundation. And um, we also pulled the coaching stocks from the, you know, the greater township area in the Western Cape. So we ended up having, I think, over 30 coaches there. And the intention was to get them on some, some form of coach education. So Coach Ed, which is our online platform, um, um, has now become accessible to a lot of those township coaches. It's so easy to onboard them. You know, they just get a password. Um, they can actually access the course online. Um, so that was what it was about. It was just a coach's workshop to work with them and get them to understand the platform and how to use it. Betway very kindly have uh, sponsored the course for us, for the for those coaches. And then we're just going to make sure that they cover their bases and, and get the certificates uh, that they need. A definitely a fantastic initiative. And I mean, the, the excitement that's seen on the coaches' faces was, was, you know, was visible last week. It was, I mean, it was a cold day, but you managed, it was inside an indoor center. Um, we went outside and there's a, a full AstroTurf, a, a, a cricket field the size of an AstroTurf. I mean, that's unheard of. Is that all the work that the, the Gary Kirsten Foundation is doing out there in Kalicha? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, it's not about the Gary Kirsten Foundation. It's, it's. I think we just the enablers, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, we. I, I think we are proud of what we've achieved. You know, it's been a long journey. It's only we've raised about seven, eight million rand there now. And um, uh, national sport and rec uh, every year give us uh, money to um, make sure that we can uh, support the coaches there. Um, so we're very grateful, you know, that we do receive the. Um, the, the funding that is required for a, a foundation of this nature. The other thing that we saw there, there were a couple of female coaches around, and that's that's also yeah. something that's that's exciting for the growth of the game. Uh, if we take it into a broader context, uh, we've just seen the the momentum Proteus women. They they've just done exceptionally well in India. Um, how much of a spin-off is that when the national team does that well? And coming down to literally on grassroots where you see female coaches and female players coming through the system, how much does an impact does the Proteus women's success have on that? 
massive. I mean, we, we know that. And, you know, even as you said, we had Makapaya there as well. You know, the, the, these are tremendous role models um, in the township region. So absolutely, the Protea women would have had a massive benefit. Um, I don't know if you were there, but, um, you know, one of the coaches um, shared her greatest uh, moment that she'd ever had in a uh, in her coaching and it um, it was a horrific story to be honest with you um, but she was able to help the the young girl who had been through real trauma um, and for her and being able to help her and then guide her through as a as a as a kind of a mother figure through the next um, couple of months was a greatest coaching moment and it brought a tear to us all to all our eyes to be honest with you but I think those are they are the heroes. You know, the coaches in that region are not only cricket coaches; they are father figures. You know, they are massive support to to a lot of the kids who just love the game of cricket. And I think that for me was also a priority. You know, can you bring cricket, which is a game we all love, bring create access to the game of cricket um, in that area? I think it's very significant now when you we see the the ascension of somebody like Temba Vavuma, who's who's the the national one day captain, the national T20 captain. And and he comes from just across the way there in, in, in Langa, um, from Ka in Cape Town and from possibly a similar environment to the way the kids that you're working with, um, you know, started with. And, uh, and and when Temba said he, when he was named captain, he said the, he understands the significance of what it means for the people um, that he represents and, and what the, the sacrifices that other people have made for him to get where he is today. Um, how do you see Temba going as, as the national captain? Uh, he's, he's had two games, they're currently playing the third. Um, how do you see him going um, with the, the ultimate goal of, of leading South Africa to a World Cup? I think he's going to be absolutely outstanding. <laughs> I really do. Um, for a number of reasons. One, I think he's proven his worth as a quality one-day player now in both formats of, of one-day cricket. Um, he's definitely proven his worth. Um, he's well respected amongst his entire um, um, or all his teammates, um, and that I do know. Um, and he's got a he's got a steeliness about him, you know, which uh, is endearing. So um, I'm very positive about his leadership potential. Um, he's a tremendous human being. Um, he's very curious. Um, you know, the, the last uh, couple of times that I've been able to connect with him, he's got an absolutely inquiring mind, um, keeps asking questions. Um, I think he's heading for the stars. He's another seer in the making. I really do believe that. I think he's, he's going he's gonna to show some great stuff for us. You've worked in the national setup. You've worked in the IPL. How, how do you view players leaving in the middle of a series for, for the IPL? Is it a... Is it as simple as a, a, a situation where we say club versus country or, or things a lot more complicated than that? <laughs> it's definitely not as simple as that. We would like to, we'd like to make it as simple as that, but I can assure yeah. you it's not. You know, the, the, there's going to be ongoing debate around that and we just need to massage it as best we can. Schedules have been topsy-turvy of late. I'm involved with 100 in the UK in July. We don't even know... You know, to try and actually get an international player to commit to that time is so difficult, you know. So, um, it's, it's unfair on, on the players. They've got their careers. So, it's not as if you can bring in a, a late change in the schedule and suddenly everything is going to be okay. We've got to, we've got to be flexi flexible around it. And I just say, you know, yes, I, you know, already I think we've had two fantastic games of cricket, you know. Um, already I'm seeing some positive signs. And, I mean, when I look at that top six batting lineup, and for me, any team for me, um, you know, you look, you've, you've got to look at bowling and you've got to look at batting separately. Um, I look at bowling as match winnability and I look at batting as st stability, you know. Um, and I see a lot, lot of stability in our top six batting lineup in one-day cricket. Um, and I think our bowling lineup um, has potential to be, to be match winners. So... You know, for me, we, I think we've got a great one-day team. I really do. So um, let's be patient. Um, let's not rush into any quick decisions. Let's just let this, the, the team build its own momentum, its own rhythm. Um, and I think we're going to be very excited about this team. I really do. It wasn't too long ago that, that half that side actually uh, beat Australia, full-strength Australia side 3-0. 
you know, so definitely the potential there, the building blocks are there. Yeah, as, as you know, Zaire, we, um, we're crying out for stability in South African cricket um, and just a bit of continuity in our processes. Um, that's why I think Timber is our first black captain in this country will bring a lot of um, um, healthy emotion to the cricket space um, and, and hopefully create some continuity and longevity. So, um, again, um, it's the cricketers that are solving all the problems um, of South African cricket, um, not the administrators. So, you know, we, 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 we're very uh, proud of our players, you know, it's as simple as that. And, you know, they're going to have to stand tall again under, you know, trying circumstances in this country. Um, and, um, you know, <laughs> because I was a player for 17 years, I'm for the players. It's, you know, that's, that's who I care about. Um, so, you know, hopefully under, under Timber, they will hold their line with the massive talent they have and do really well. Um, I think it's exciting times for us. I think uh, I bumped into, into your good mate, James Smith, the other day, uh, actually quite, quite a few times. Uh, he was running on the treadmill, which was quite a, <laughs> a fun thing to watch. That's good to, that's good to yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun thing to watch. And then the next day uh, in Constantia Village, uh, we kind of asked each other, are you following me or me following you? You know, what's the, what's happening? But we just had a chat and he, and he was speaking about how excited he is about the Lapping cricket in terms of the challenges and, the, and, and everything going on around COVID. But he really feels that that side is building, that something is building, particularly in white ball cricket, that they, they're starting to put the building blocks in place, the... You know, the the the, the cricket, the, the batters particularly, there's excitement around them. Um, the, the fast bowlers, the spinners, is they are the units of building a successful side. And he and he really feels that you know if they get enough games, um, and that's the challenge for him to to put together, that they can actually compete with the very best. Oh yeah, and you know I take a lot of comfort in Graham Smith being in the leadership space that he is in. I take a lot of comfort out of that. He knows how to win. He knows how to bring excellence into an environment, so he's he's absolutely spot on. Make no mistake, if he's in a in a strong leadership position in cricket in this country, I'm I'm happy because I know what he's like as a leader. As a, um, in terms of a lot of we, we speak about mental shifts and, and and mental attitudes. That's quite a common term that that's thrown around in cricket. And and you, you watch a guy like Fakazama and get. 193, like an absolutely fantastic innings. Um, you got 188 when bats weren't that big and power plays weren't that, you know, that long, you know. So there had to be something special to get to get runs like that. And and now we watch a guy like Aiden Markham who who gets off, he gets those fantastic starts, but he doesn't put it together in a big like this big innings. What does it take to to go from those sparkling 30s and 40s that that look very pretty, but don't really make an impact on the scoreboard. Oh, you know, my view, they'll come. I mean, he's a he's a serious player, <laughs> Zaya. He's a serious player. You know, we've got to, we've got to be patient with him. You know, we have to be. And um, um, listen, let's not, you know, the 30s and 40s are great. I'll take them for the meantime. Um, but I also know what's around the corner with someone like Aidan Markram. I think he is a stunning, stunning player. He's the closest I've seen to... Doc Callis in, you know, in a long time. You know, uh, Surav Ganguly's come out and he's he's made a, a big statement today saying uh, the Indians are tougher than the Australians and the English. They're mentally tougher. Um, I think that might cause a bit of a stir, but just what, wh wh where are we in terms of how how long can we play in these bio bubbles? Um, not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I think it's, I think, it, you know, we, you, you can't make a, you know, it's difficult, it's dangerous to make a blanket statement. Everyone reacts differently, you know, and, um, you know, if someone's mental health is at stake because they, because part of their job is that they're forced to operate within four walls, you know, you can't just take that lightly and say, oh, toughen up. It's, uh, we can't operate in a world like that. You know, you've got to yeah. look at you've got to look at the situation and say, yes, there are issues at stake, and we need to plan and prepare for that. You know, maybe what it does do in in every in every um, in life, the one thing that I've learned is that through adversity, there's always opportunity. So, you know, 
what are the opportunities? Well, the opportunities are maybe rotating the teams a little bit more. England did that really well in India. You know, just 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 have a little bit more of a rotation system going where you are getting guys in and out of the space a little bit more, you know. Um, but I don't think it's a, it's a, I don't think mentally it's a healthy environment. Gary, we, we, we're going to finish up here with a, something that I presume is quite close to your heart. Uh, South African domestic cricket is returning to a provincial setup. Uh, we know that you love playing for Western Province. It was it's something that you've said numerously that, you know, you grew up. I did that. Uh. You grew up at New, <laughs> you grew up at Newlands, and you know, and and wearing the blue and white was was all you wanted. Um, so, going from reverting from franchise cricket back to provincial cricket, what do you think it's going to do for South African cricket? And and do you think it's a it's a good thing? Oh, that's a loaded question, eh, Zaya? <laughs> <laughs> that's my job. That's my job. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what the answer. I don't know what the complete answer is. Um, I do have a view. Uh, I suppose we we all entitled to a view. Um, I definitely f- was of the view that I felt we needed to increase our first class system base. You know, um, but but they, 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 you know there comes a point um, where so let's just say at, at franchise level the quality is there of competition and. At 15 teams, which they have now, the the the, the quality is going to drop, isn't it? I mean, yes, that's, that's that, a standard. That, 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 we've got more teams. Say, yes. It's just how much ma- it's a given. It's just yes. how much it drops, and I think if it gets too low, um, gets too low, then it becomes a problem. But if it drops a little bit and kind of goes to about there, then I don't think that's a problem because we've got to look at um, broadening the base. You cannot have you know, 66 first-class cricketers on a field every weekend. I don't, I don't think that's enough. Um, I think there are more good cricketers around in South Africa. Um, I'm not sure whether 15 teams is going to make it so weak that, that it's not going to be good for our game. Thank you very yeah. much for your time. <laughs> it's fantastic to have you on the ILL Sports Show as, as our first guest. And uh, we hope to catch, you, catch up with you in the future again. Thanks, Aya, and good luck with your show. Thank you very much. Cheers, guys.